Momonosuke clearly has a very important role in Wano. He is the rightful heir to the Shogun, the direct descendant of the Kozuki clan, son of Kozuki Odin, but right now, he's not looking too hot. He's currently hung up on a crucifix Yasuye style for a public execution, and uh, he got messed up by Kondro, got the unintentional duck face going on, but obviously he's not gonna die. Somebody's gonna end up saving him, and he will get his shining moment in Wano. I am almost 100% certain of that. So that's gonna be our topic for this video, Momonosuke's role and importance in Wano, uh, how he could potentially power up his true strength, and some One Piece theories about Momonosuke's power and how he could get stronger and we're also going to be talking about his future in the story and that, that whole debate with Momonosuke for Nakama and, and if he becomes a straw hat we're going to get into that as well so stay tuned for it. But we start with Momonosuke's role. Now obviously Momonosuke is very important like I said he's the heir uh, to the Kazuki clan and he is like the symbol of hope right like you saw the respect he garnered just because of who he is. You had the minx that just bow down to him showing that respect the minx have for the Kazuki clan and you know just uh, Momonosuke gaining that respect because he's the son of Odin. And then you saw the effect he had on the prisoners of Udon, like them seeing him. The glimpse of hope kind of returned to them. And that's what's important about Momonosuke. Like there could be people leading this rebellion, but he is that hope. He is the proof that the Kazuki clan lives on. You know, the 20 years ago when Odin made his great claim, open up Wano for us. Uh, you know, the people were probably inspired, but they've been bogged down for 20 years now. So they really need like Momonosuke to be there. And then also Toki's last words of like, you will be the ones to bring upon this new dawn. Now seeing Momonosuke still alive, the son of both those people who gave him, left them such a strong message to fulfill in the future. That hope of success and like care out the wills of both Toki and Odin lives through Momonosuke. And Momonosuke knows this. He knows his role in the story. And for how young and goofy and how much of a crybaby he is, he's very mature in this aspect. His shining moments have been like straight up asking Luffy for help uh, to s help save his country. And then of course, before he got kidnapped by Kondro, he said to the samurai, don't worry about me. It's bigger than me. Go on and free Wano and fight this war. I will escape this somehow by myself. And those moments were great. But right Right now, it seems like he's kind of just a figurehead, and I don't think it's just gonna be that. I think Momonosuke will, like, prove his words in a way, right? Actually showcase he is, like, the member of the Kozuki clan that is worth uh, being the Shogun, and really, he will have a shining moment. Where he showcases not only is he worthy of being the Shogun by how mature he is and, I, and his ideologies, but also by his strength. So let's talk about Momonosuke's power. Momonosuke, right now, very weak, okay? Like, in his base form, uh, you know, he's been hitting the gym, practicing swordsmanship a little bit, yelling snatch and all that, but I don't think uh, he's really hurting anybody. In fact, uh, when I saw Momonosuke got bodied by Kondro, I actually laughed out loud. You might think I'm a bad person, but the last time we saw Momonosuke before that, we were like, he was like looking down at the sword, and we are like, oh, okay, Momonosuke is gonna have like a little moment. He's gonna escape from Kanjiro, but then he just kind of shows up all messed up and uh, you know, really, he did cut his ropes, but he couldn't do anything else. So in his base form, I don't think he's gonna fight anybody and really do any damage. What is interesting though, is he has the Amino Habakiri uh, passed on from Kazuki Odin, his dad. Of course he said he's not strong enough to use it right now, but I'm wondering, does that mean that great sword, that very important sword, one of the swords that cut Kaido also alongside Emma, is that just going to be sidelined for all of Wano because uh, Momonosuke is not going to use it. And if he's not ready to use it now, he's probably not going to be ready to use it for a while. So are we just never going to see the Amino Habakiri in action again besides Odin's flashback? And this is where we get to our first theory is that Momonosuke will sometime in this arc grow older. As far as I know, there are three ways that people have theorized that this could happen. One is that it's an effect of Toki's fruit. Uh, another one is Jewelry Bonnie coming to Wano and using her powers on Momonosuke. And the third one is Shinobu using her fruit to uh, mature Momonosuke to a grown age. Now I will say this would be epic. Momonosuke all of a sudden becoming a full grown man and like fighting with his sword, getting the Ame and like really doing damage. That would be badass to see, but I just don't think it's that realistic. So let's break down all the options here. The least likely one I actually think is Shinobu's fruit because Shinobu's fruit um, that would make it really, really overpowered. Um, her mature, mature fruit has shown the ability to mature things, right? So when she was like on the ceiling, she like matured the wood and like broke down that wood and it like rotted away. But like if she's able to do that to like people, 
That's very broken. She's essentially like using big moms. She's like taking the lifespan away, right? She can mature you to a very old age to, to the point where you die. So I don't think Shinobu's fruit has that effect. It probably only works on like natural elements or something. Or if it works on people, she probably can't control it to like a great degree to like make it work on Momonosuke. So I'm crossing that off easily. With Jewelry Bonnie, like her fruit is definitely like a direct connect to age. And like you saw, she was able to turn into an old lady and turn into a young little girl. So that fruit could definitely turn Momonosuke older. But she's not even here right now. So like, I know that like a lot of people want all the super Nova's in Wano because there are so many of them there already but theorizing Bonnie to come and like at the same time why would she have any motivation to help like Momonosuke and the, like the samurai of Wano and like the last time we saw her she was like uh in Marijua uh by the world government at the reverie so like her all of a sudden showing up and then helping Momonosuke I just don't know how that will work storytelling wise and then finally Toki's fruit we just haven't seen any resemblance any signs of that being a power of Toki's fruit. As far as we know, she's just able to send herself and other people into the future, right? She can't jump to the past or anything like that. It's just the ability to send people into the future. And like, yeah, it could be a side effect or like another like part of her power uh, of her devil fruit, but that would kind of coincide with like Bonnie's fruit in the way. I just don't think there's been any signs indicating that that could be a possibility. I will say I am very interested in Toki as a whole and like how she could be involved in the story. Like when I read the flashback really quickly, I thought it was like implied she was dead, but then I just recently went back and like read it again and just like, it's a little obscure. We don't see her dead or anything anything. Brago recently brought it up in one of his videos and so that really got me thinking. I might talk about this in another video. But as for Toki using her fruit to like power up Momonosuke and make him old, we just haven't seen any signs of that. So Momonosuke growing old while that would be cool and him using Amino Habakiri would be dope, I just don't think it's realistic. Now another element of Momonosuke's power is obviously his devil fruit. Now his devil fruit very similar to Kaido's dragon, okay? Now, it's not very strong, all right? As far as we've seen, he can't even really control when he turns into that dragon. He only, like, randomly turns into it when he's scared and stuff, and it's not very strong. It has the ability to fly, but, like, it really, he's, like, really struggling. But I did talk about this a little bit in my, like, Vegapunk Kaido uh, experimentation theory. Um, if you haven't checked that out, it's up there. Um, but the fact that Momonosuke ate Vegapunk's artificial fruit, I think that fruit definitely has some hidden power. Like if Caesar was able to make smile devil fruits and like the powers of the gifters who are relatively strong as he as we've seen in Wano, uh, I don't believe that Vegapunk could make a weaker fruit like this wimpy dragon fruit that Momonosuke owns. And how similar it looks like Kaido's fruit in the same way they fly as well by generating clouds and climbing upon them with like their claws and stuff. I think there's some kind of connection there. But I don't think this is gonna be a major power up. So maybe it's just like some kind of sneak attack or something or like a surprise attack moment that comes in later that Momonosuke all of a sudden discovers in the midst of battle. Or it could just be used as a storytelling element where he like reveals that form and like Kaido is like super surprised or something and like that catches him off guard or something like that. It's just the fact that Momonosuke hasn't transformed into that form uh, yet on Onigashima and Kaido hasn't seen that form. I think that like Oda's saving that up for something. So I think it definitely will be used but it's not like a really strong power up. But Momonosuke does have one power that is devastatingly strong. His true power and that is control of Zunisha. And like it's not just the ability to hear him and speak to him. We saw he had the ability to like almost control control Zunisha in a way. He was able to look through its eyes and see like when Jack was attacking, he saw through Z Zunisha's eyes like, oh, Jack's attacking. That's what's happening. And Zunisha is goddamn strong. That thing is gigantic. It one shot at Jack, didn't kill him, but it was just one swing of a tusk and it took out one of the Yonko commanders for the Beast Pirates. So uh, Zunisha is hella strong, but there is a caveat here because Momonosuke, uh, it kind of takes a lot out of him to control Zunisha. Zunisha, like he passed out right after his, using Zunisha to attack Jack, but he did stay behind in Zo to like work with communicating with Zunisha and learning more about him. And we really 
really haven't seen where that goes. He hasn't explained like what happens. And like, I feel like Zunisha coming to Onigashima and Wano makes a lot of sense. Like why would Momo not use this terrifying power that he has to help the Samurai Alliance? Like Zunisha is so strong that a lot of people theorize that Momonosuke is Uranus, the ancient weapon, because like, you know, Zunisha is so tall because that he reaches the sky, so in that way you call it like a sky weapon, like Uranus is named after the sky god. Or maybe there's even more animals like Zunisha, like Zunisha said he was like banished and like forced to like tread the waters and stuff. Maybe there are other ones like him that wasn't like, didn't make a mistake and like they still exist out there and like Momonosuke could call them. But either way, just Zunisha alone coming to Wano would be a, a big boost to the samurai side. And like the amount of allies the, the samurai side has gained so far with like Marco and potentially the Whitebeard Pirates and Jinbei coming back, then Jiro and all that and Yamato most recently as well. The only disadvantage they're at right now is just like the, the sheer size of like Kaido's crew of like 20,000 people. But at the same time, if you just bring one giant ass elephant that could wipe out all those guys so my thinking was always like maybe like the grand fleet shows up to kind of even out the numbers or like the remnants of white beard pirates marco brought them to like kind of even out the numbers how about you just bring this one giant ass elephant and this is another theory i thought of while scripting this video that big sword on uh, onigashima a lot of people have theorized maybe kid will use it with his magnetic powers or big mom will like put a homie into it make it alive and make it hers how about a giant ass elephant elephant wrapping his tusks around it and swinging that big sword like cutting the skull in half oh my that would be crazy so i definitely think zunisha should play a role and like that being momo's like epic moment i think would be very fitting to him and that is his most like devastating power that it already exists right it doesn't have to be a crazy theory of him growing old or like his devil fruit like all of a sudden transforming into like kaido's fruit or something crazy like that he already he has access to a very strong elephant. So let's just use this to segue into what Momonosuke's future in the story is. So in Wano, I mentioned, I think his like big moment will be Zunisha arriving. That makes a lot of sense. I think his like uh, dragon fruit will play a role as well, where it's like a surprise attack or like a, something to do with Kaido and, and tie it back that way. I think that will play a role. But after Wano, after they win the war, what will Momonosuke do? And this, let's just get this, let's Let's just fully discuss this now. I've said this in live streams and before and like little bits here and there in other videos, but Momonosuke for Nakama. So I think the main argument is this. Momonosuke is too young to be the Shogun of Wano and he has this moment. Maybe he's like, I need to go out and see the world and learn from like everybody else to like how to become a better leader. That way I could come back and be a proper leader and uh, be the Shogun of Wano. And people are paralleling that to like how Odin went out and explored and learned stuff. And also people have been saying that Momo at, like could be a cabin boy for the Straw Hats, like how Shanks and Buggy were like apprentices around his age as well. And in a way he could learn a lot from the Straw Hats, from like Nami and like the navigation and like about the Poneglyphs and history from Robin and stuff. And I do agree he could definitely benefit from that but I just don't see Momonosuke joining the crew for several reasons. First off the Straw Hats and how they are set up. They're just a 10 man crew right now. They're a very small crew. Yes, they have the Grand Fleet that they lead a lot of people and they have a lot of allies but as for the main crew they're very small so in my opinion Everybody has to be able to carry their weight and contribute and be able to be self-sufficient. I don't think they could really have a member that they like need to protect like Momonosuke. Even like Roger's crew having Shanks and Buggy ha as like apprentices, that crew had like 30 to 40 people if I'm not mistaken, okay? They're not like just 10 people like going around like having their own adventure. And like the whole point of the time skip was for the whole crew to get stronger as a whole, to be strong enough to be the crew of the Pirate King in Luffy. So in that aspect, I just don't see them having a cabin boy or apprentice with someone like Momonosuke, somebody that they have to protect. Now, maybe if the crazy theory happens of him getting older, I guess that will make sense. But him as a young boy, I just don't see it. And in my opinion, here's how Momonosuke's story is, right? We've seen over and over again that like he is not Odin, right? Odin was crazy. He's a crazy lad, okay? He was killing bears at four years old. At 12, he was banging bitches, okay? He's a completely different animal. And Momonosuke is not him. He's not that crazy 
crazy strong, but in a way he can become better than his father by doing what Odin couldn't do and becoming the Shogun of Wano. And I forgot to mention this when I was talking about the importance of Momonosuke, but he even himself had a claim to Kaido when he was getting strangled by Kaido, right? This took a lot of balls. He was literally getting strangled by Kaido and he was like, I will be the Shogun of Wano in the future and lead this nation, nation to a better future. That was said to Kaido, the strongest creature in the world, one of the Yonko of the sea, right? So that was like a big proclamation. So I definitely think he needs to become the Shogun. I know the whole point is that he's not ready yet, but I think he is. He has a lot of smart people around him. Of course, Hiyori. I think he could learn within Wano. He's already explored a lot out in the sea. He was literally born on a pirate ship, all right? He saw a lot as a kid. And traveling as the Straw Hats as well, he did his exploration. In a way, he's like the opposite of Odin, right? He's not as strong as his dad, but he was born outside of Wano on the sea. He did his exploration. Now he could do what his father couldn't and become the Shogun of Wano. And I think this actually links back to Zunisha coming to Wano because the whole point is like opening the borders, right? That's Odin's dream. Of course, he's going to do that. Now, once the borders are open, people are like the Marines and the world government and other pirates are going to want in on their resources. And like, of course, they have the waterfalls and everything, but like opening its borders, I'm sure they're going to try to let people in a little more, maybe ha like open that port down on the bottom bottom and like people are gonna try to invade and how do you stop that how about just have a giant ass elephant right there guarding the <laughs> the entrance to Wano and with that you could have Momonosuke kind of showing his power in a way with controlling Zunisha and then staying there as the Shogun and ruling over Wano and maybe that way like I said in my Grand Fleet video Kinemon and the others could join the Grand Fleet and like form their own pirate crew I'm sure some people will stay behind uh, in Wano with uh, Momonosuke I feel like Ashura Doji is some who wouldn't leave Wano. Maybe Denjiro as well, but I definitely could see like other samurai like leaving with Kinemon and exploring the sea as pirates and joining the Grand Fleet with Luffy. And yeah, that's just what makes the most sense to me. Momonosuke becoming the Shogun after this war is over and they won and everything. And then he could have Zunisha guarding it. And he's the proper leader and he also protects the country with his own power in a way as well. But what do you guys think? What do you think about Momonosuke's role in Wano and his possible power-ups and those theories we talked talked about and whether or not Momonosuke will become a straw hat let me know in the comments below but as always thank you guys for watching I hope you enjoyed if you did enjoy please hit that like button it helps a lot with a YouTube algorithm and if you want to keep up to date with when I'm posting new videos or doing live streams you got to hit that subscribe button uh listen the YouTube algorithm grabbed uh two of my most recent videos with the straw hat grand fleet and the Yamato for straw hat and uh we got a lot of new people I like last I checked it was 418 it's probably over 420 now uh like literally last video i talked about we were like what 320 or something like that i hit 300 subscribers like three days ago and we're already well over 400 we might hit 500 soon which was my next goal that i said after 100 subscribers so thank you guys so much welcome to all the people who have found this channel thank you for subscribing and hitting the like button and commenting it's been so much fun interacting with all you guys but let's keep it going hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to join the crew as well follow me on twitter i am D King 4. You can click right there for another video I made. Click right there for a playlist of videos similar to this one. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.